open air collector extraordinaire and the builder of the very first uh, violet prototype here in Montclair, New Jersey, Jeff first Federson. But not last. First, but first but not last, but there always has to be a first. Jeff Federson, what's going on, man? Hey, man. Yeah, so you're going to give us a little tour. For the first time today. Uh, Beautiful. Seen it online, but here it is in person. Uh, and the idea, of course, is it's got to be pretty simple, right? Like, if we want people to build it, it's got to be simple, cheap. You can get the stuff at the home store. Uh, so it's a little DIY, but this is what we're trying right now. Uh, the heart of it is the sorbent cartridge. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, a descendant of the work of Klaus Lochner, uh, Vital Wang, and uh, many, many sheets of sorbent. And our job is to push air across it and to get it wet. And that's about it. And if we can do those things in a cycle, then we might be able to store and release uh, CO2. And so this does or tries to do those things. We got air oh. handling here. Watch the boat. <laughs> Sorry about my head. <laughs> uh, so these big fans uh, will push as much air through here as we want. Yeah. Uh, that gets diffused. What are these uh, normally used for, these guys? Uh, ventilating. Like uh, systems, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, hydroponics. Also uh, joined by Open Air co-founder Matt Parker, <laughs> a.k.a. Mad Parker. <laughs> so, yeah, these push the air. This diffuses the air and kind of spreads it out so it passes evenly through all the, uh, the sorbent sheets. Mm -hmm. uh, the sheets hopefully then grab the CO2 off of it. We can vent it out to the blast gates. In a later date, we would then route either the sort of CO2 poor air or the CO2 rich air to different places, depending on what we want to do. Very cool. The only job of this machine right now is to kind of differentiate the two. So we can push the air through it, and then once we think we've dried it off enough and absorbed enough CO2, we can uh, hook it up to a water supply, mm -hmm. get it wet, and we can measure right. whether we're releasing CO2 or not. The electronics aren't hooked up at the moment, but they're on a test chamber. And we could swap them into here and start pumping air out of the, this chamber, see how much CO2 is in it after we've gotten it wet. Very cool. And if the CO2 goes up, it means we did our job, right? We captured it, we got it wet, we re released it, and then we can send that extra CO2. Very somewhere. awesome. And the housing here, you cut all of that right here in the shop, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So I've got the CNC right. router over there, and we just try to knock it together. But you could do this with, you know, bandsaw, or, or it does, it just mm -hmm. there's really not much to it, other than we have to kind of support the heavy weight of this cartridge, which is about 80 or 90 pounds. Yeah, it's on wheels too, which is pretty yeah. cool, I think. And then Great. when we fill it with water, it's even heavier. So that's yeah. kind of the, the mechanical constraint. Mm -hmm. and we'd like it to be airtight. We'd like it to be watertight. So that's, yeah. that's another piece there. So about that part, like, well, the other stuff here. So this is for HVAC. This is just sort of a multi-purpose container. These are two of them sort of flipped that's right. upside yeah, down, right? That's right. one and a big one, and uh, it's just from the home store. So it's, it's all, all off the shelf. That's part of the design yeah. parameters here, right? What are these guys for here? Uh, these are the blast gates, so we can we can seal it up, or we can open that and imagine you know ducting connected to that okay. going to some application like a greenhouse yeah. or what have you. And obviously, this the story of the sorbent is a whole other thing, but all this other stuff is is all ordered online, mostly Amazon and Home Depot yeah, type of stuff, right? I think those two places. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah hardware stores, Amazon. And Royal yeah. Hardware in Montclair, New Jersey has been great to me. They got all the other <laughs> nice screws and nice uh, plug. plug. <laughs> very good. Very good. And what are the? Where are we right now with it? Obviously, it's a work in progress. It's been an amazing uh, two-year journey to get to this point. Uh, we got some stuff to figure out. How would you summarize the state of play right now? Yeah, so we've run it through a couple cycles, and we do see the CO2 go up and down. Uh, you know, not as much as we would like. Not as much as we would like to see the kind of one kilogram a day sort of cycle that we're we're all shooting for. So we're right now drilling in on just what's going on with that material. Yeah. So we, that's kind of what this setup is. Separate from Violet is the sorbent tester. So here we can take just a small piece of the material, mm -hmm. put it in here, uh, see what it does vis-a-vis -vis absorbing and releasing CO2, and we can test the various kind of unknowns, like what is the best way to prepare the sorbent? Right now there's a question, mm -hmm. do we need to wash it in distilled water versus tap water because American tap water has more chlorine than Chinese tap water? Right. So this is the kind of unit that lets us test those questions more quickly without having to run a big, you know, process through this bigger thing. Okay. And what is the, uh, in terms of the um, the number of folks who have been contributing to this, what can we say? But where does this come from? Is it just you guys in a garage or is <laughs> yeah, there just, uh, yeah. uh, just you too? I mean, you know, as you, if you're watching this in the future, this is the middle of a huge pandemic. So <laughs> this is like the first time the three of us have been in yeah, the same room yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so without our masks. Yeah. But by virtue of living in the suburbs and having a, a couple tools in my garage, I got couple, to build yeah. the first thing. But it's really like, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 yeah. people really that have contributed online. Over time, more. I'd say there's been more, probably yeah. two dozen. You know, yeah. some have, have uh, come and gone. And 
some have uh, remained the whole time, and some have just recently joined, but uh, it really has been a big group effort. But uh, Jeff here deserves uh, the lion's share of the actual construction and uh, ideas behind this unit. Yeah, definitely. And in terms of what's next, really, um, I mean, this is obviously something, the key thing is the device, and we want to make it open source, so we're going to publish it online, and so that hopefully it'll continue to evolve. But besides just figuring out the sorbent, Matt, I saw you tinkering around with some little mini... <laughs> microelectronics. What are some other things that we can expect to add to the, the unit in the near future? Well, so Jeff has constructed this uh, very uh, well-made and uh, uh, advanced uh, sorbent tester. We're working on a much more straightforward and small sorbent tester uh, that will be easier for the average person to construct uh, and will be able to give us similar data so that more people can test more different chemicals so we can experiment with more things. Yep. Uh, this is what that looks like. This oh, is cool. Thank you. Yeah. Some electronics. Nice. Sensor, and that's it. You can put it on a chamber and test a, a sorbent inside that chamber. Yeah. Very, very cool. And so we believe by the end of the day, today maybe, mm -hmm. or pretty soon, uh, we will have a very small working unit that we can uh, document that, post it on our GitHub, uh, get it open source hardware uh, certified uh, by mm -hmm. Ushua, the Open Source Hardware Association. Um, and uh, then more people can build more of those and we can start testing more and more chemicals that can potentially lead us to more efficient ways of, uh, and more accessible ways of capturing CO2. So there's like from a kind of collective effort perspective, there's the optimization of this machine itself, uh, all the various electronic components, and then there's also the actual chemistry and performance of the different types of sorbents. So these are all sort of different directions or things that we're going to be working on to make violet evolve over time. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, a plumber, a chemist, <laughs> and a hacker. Yeah, yeah. and that's the thing. And anybody can uh, can ultimately Just come designer, and basically in, in any background, right? Yeah. Former Navy, former Navy uh, submarine uh, engineer uh, officer, uh, Chris yeah. Chung has been working on this for uh, almost since the beginning. Yeah. Um, yeah, just the diversity of backgrounds uh, for other people working on this is really inspiring. And uh, so many people have contributed so much. It's really, uh, it's really great. Very cool. And last thing, why is it called Violet? Um, <laughs> you want me to answer your shirt? Do you want me to answer honestly? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a flower reference slash uh, because we our initial funding came from uh, New York University and they are the violets and we are all in one way or another associated with NYU. Uh, <laughs> favorite flower. It is also my favorite flower and I'm also have an NYU uh, background too. So anyway, that's amazing and it was probably you can see we are actually in a garage. So anyway, great job guys.